There's a composer in the world of games. There's been precious few games in our series here, but I want to play you a music from a game. Um, there's a composer friend of mine um, who uh, I remember I never, he was not my friend at the time when this game came out. I didn't, I'd never met him. And I read an interview where he was talking about how he wanted to write like the most vicious horror score imaginable and essentially kind of one up John Corleano. So John Corleano, he's only done four film scores. He's primarily a classical composer. I think he's one of the, he's maybe arguably the best living American composer. He's truly, truly, truly brilliant. We'll talk about him in greater length. But his first ever film score, I think also 1979, 1980, around the same time as The Changeling, was um, Altered States. Um, hmm. And that score sounds like this. Like... He does a really great thing with three oboes playing very low, like... That's the very bottom, of, those are the lowest notes an oboe can play. And listen to how sort of tribal and vicious... Here's three oboes in unison, which they cannot play in tune, which was the point. So this score is considered like one of the landmark film scores. And so I was reading this interview with this composer named Jason Graves, who was saying how he had to write everything by hand because sample libraries simply could not mock up the score that he had written for this game. And I remember I read that and I rolled my eyes and I was like, what a bunch of shit. Sample libraries have come a long way. You think you're so cool. And then you're like, oh, well, my music is just so advanced that I literally have to just hand it to the orchestra because you can't even begin to approximate it with libraries. And I, and I decided I don't like this guy. I decided he's pretentious <laughs> and he's full of shit and he's just trying to get a good line in for like Polygon or IGN or whatever. At the time, I, I don't even know what it would have been because this was this was you know more than ten years ago, um, and then I went and listened to the score, which was for Dead Space, and oh, I, knew I was it. like, I was like, holy fuck, he wasn't exaggerating. You could not possibly have mocked this up. This is this is done with samples. He made a custom sample library of all he hand wrote all these orchestral phrases and created this incredibly elaborate sort of Lego series, like bucket of Legos that mm. he then custom put together for purposes of the score to Dead Space. So again, this is this is technically samples that he made himself and then chopped up to build the score from. And I don't know how he could have done it any other way because I played the Corleano first because that's clearly the kind of score that he was writing, but listen to the steroid overdrive he managed to achieve. But was he try? Sorry, was sorry. he trying to do? Was this a mock up or is, so it was like this is the I final eventually... product? No, no. The, the, I don't think you could record this quite. Like I don't think you could wow. beat this by then going and recording it properly. He built essentially a sound effect library of very musical orchestral sound effects, Got and it, it yielded mm. this.
it goes on for about, you know, a whole, I don't know, few more hours and then two sequels. <laughs> I'm really impressed that those are not that those that those are samples. Again, it's a custom <clears throat> It's a custom Still. library. All these runs and gestures, those were recorded as discrete effects. You know, he would tell the strings, okay, you know, we're going to do... And he'd get that at a few dynamics, a few tempos, except it, there was always more to it than just that. It was always, you know, well, drifting flat or breaking into a cluster. I mean, he just embraced this idea of building a, a an elaborate custom library. And that's the thing. When I heard that score, I was like, oh, I take it all back. I... I He's amazing. 